We're gonna build and sell some of our inventions. I did all the math last night. We're gonna use $2 to buy the supplies for the spaghetti spinners. We'll make 1,000 of them and sell them for $10. Then we'll have $10,000. Then we'll make 20,000 spinners and sell them for $10. Then we'll have $200,000. Do it once more and how much do we get? A million dollars. Wow. The reason why I fell in love with the script, you know, I'd been developing some other projects, um, but when this one came across my desk, it was the best one. First of all, you know, it's very well written. Basically, the film is about two children who are left to fend for themselves when their hardworking single mother is embroiled in a pyramid scheme and disappears. You know, it's really a story about immigrants and working class Americans who find themselves in desperate circumstances and end up getting entangled in dubious pyramid schemes. My customers saw the story they did on Channel 7. Now everyone wants to return their products. Let me handle this. All returns, they go through corporate. Corporate is not accepting returns anymore. Your voice. I have my hand. Let me talk to you. Call corporate. They'll sort it out. So we premiered at Sundance in January of 2009. At Sundance, you know, there, there's this particular way it's done. You know, you hire publicists, particular publicists who knows how to work Sundance, because it is kind of a, a zoo. We had a sales agent and a publicist. Um, the sales agent's job is basically to get distributors to come see your movie and hopefully buy them. Um, this year at Sundance, it was an interesting year. I mean, basically the whole economy collapsed just a few months prior to Sundance. and. You know, the independent film world had been dying over the last few years and, you know, distributors are just dropping like flies. So it really, by the time we'd gotten to Sundance, it really had become a buyer's market. Not a lot of films were acquired out of Sundance. And after Sundance, um, we decided to do an experiment by doing a hybrid distribution strategy while we're on the festival circuit. Um, our executive producer, um, he consults with people like Ted Hope and Peter Broderick, who are DIY gurus, and they suggested that we sell the DVD at festival screenings and online while we're still on the festival circuit. You know, at first we were really hesitant about this because we're like, oh, it's going to taint us for, you know, the traditional distribution. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a taboo thing to do. You know, a lot of B-movies do it, but, you know, critically acclaimed films from Sundance, not so much. And once that big premiere was out of the way, our goal was really to play as many festivals as possible, primarily to get the publicity from, from all of them and just to get the word out about the film. All filmmakers should have this strategy is that, you know, if you're a U.S. filmmaker and you want to go for an American premiere, it's really four festivals you should target. It's Sundance, South by Southwest, Tribeca, and L.A. Film Festival. Festivals are very persnickety about premieres. You know, you have to be very careful about where your regional premieres are, as well as your world premiere and your international premiere, your Asian premiere, your European premiere. So look at it on a regional basis. Try to go for the biggest festival in that region, and if that doesn't work out, then go for the next biggest. Really, a film festival does benefit the filmmaker. You know, the Hawaii International Film Festival is our 35th festival. And by the end of 2009, we will have played, you know, over 40 film festivals and um, we've been able to generate a lot of gross receipts from festival screening fees um, because it really is a symbiotic relationship between the film and the festival. I mean, you know, you can't survive without them, they can't survive without you, and, you know, they're selling tickets to your movie, so you really should be seeing some money from that. We've been pretty lucky in that, you know, after we premiered at Sundance, we were able to use that as leverage to ask for screening fees and ask for submission fee waivers as well. Um, that's another thing too that a lot of filmmakers don't realize that it's very, very expensive to submit your film to festivals. It's like, you know, 50 to $75 per festival. But, you know, if you end up getting it into, making a good film, first of all, um, and getting it into a marquee festival, then you're able to sort of leverage that. The whole Asian American Film Festival circuit has been really great for us, and that's another thing too that that I think a lot of filmmakers should capitalize on is the niche audiences that their film appeals to. We won 13 awards, you know, seven of them were from non-Asian American festivals, six of them were from Asian American Film Festivals. So we've been well received all over, but I think that the fans are particularly supportive um, at the Asian American Film Festivals. We've gotten a lot of love from them, and you know, I think that the fact that the film portrays the complex and multi dimensions of an immigrant family is is very appealing to Asian Americans. 
For more information about the film, you can go to our website, childrenofinvention.com, and you can actually buy a DVD off of the site.